Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Let's finish the trench coat finally. I have dedicated this week to finishing up the pattern, writing the sewing instructions and finally finishing the piece itself. So one thing we still have left to do is the belt loops and the belt and then we can tackle the lining. And I said that before in my first part, I think this is a series already. So if you haven't watched the three parts before this one, go ahead and check out my playlist up here in the eye. I mentioned already in part one that we're doing a half lining with like somewhat of a butterfly lining. I don't know if it's called the same in English, but in German, we would say American lining. Maybe you can give me a comment down below telling me what this lining is actually called. I'm just gonna call it half lining or half of a lining because we're just gonna do the top of our back piece basically and we're overlapping the lining in this uh, way so that it has movement and then the sleeves are also lined. But before that, let's actually finish the shell and by that I mean we still need to attach the belt loops to the specific dividing seams and then we still need to do the belt and then we can start with the lining. So the belt loops are these pattern pieces right here. They're three centimeters wide and we just want to fold the seam allowances towards the inside. Obviously if you have fabric that is fraying you want to overlock the long sides of the belt loop. But apart from that you also just want to fold this towards the inside. You can basically you know change the width of the belt loops however you see fit. I am probably going to do it like this so that they meet in the center. I'm just gonna fold it like this with a seam allowance of 0.75 and I'm gonna have a belt loop that is about 1.5 centimeters thick and I'm just gonna top stitch closely to the edge right here to have a nice finish and I think this is gonna like look really nicely when sitting on these dividing seams and that's exactly where I'm going to attach them. So right before the box pleat starts is where I want to attach them here. Okay, so I went ahead and tested the belt loops that I want to do. This is what they look like. These are nine centimeters long. So what you can see right here is nine centimeters because the belt is eight. So I want to have a little bit of room there for the belt to, you know, go through and stuff. And this is what I want to do with them. On the inside, you can't see any raw edges because how I sewed it on, it hides the raw edges right here. Like they're tucked under here, the raw edges. So that's what I want to do throughout the folds right here. For the belt loop length I want to do nine centimeters as I said and then for the tucking away of the belt loop I want to add another 4.5 centimeters. So I'm gonna cut off pieces that measure 13.5 centimeters and I need seven of these pieces and while cutting I'm also going to mark where I am folding. So this is the length right here and this line is the fold line for the belt loop. So this gets tucked underneath like so. So if you want to, you can also add another line here. So this is the piece and now I'm just gonna cut five more of these, then I have seven in total. And now we're ready to put the belt loops on. And as I said, I'm gonna put them right above the box pleats. So I have my box pleat right here. This is where it ends. So that's where I want to add a belt loop. I'm gonna take my belt loop right here and I'm going to fold it at the very end. This is gonna be how it's gonna be folded. So this part right here is going to lay right on top of the seam and I'm gonna stitch right over that marked line so that once that's sewn down and I fold it as intended, the second fold line right here is gonna be right at the start of the box plate here. And this side gets folded the same way. So once I have the first side stitched in place, it's rather easy to also stitch this side in place. So right where the marked line is, fold it over top and top stitch very closely to that upper edge or tack it in place right here.
So for the belt, I'm just gonna fold right sides together and stitch along the long side, leaving this short side open. And on the other side of the belt, coming over here, I'm going to close this side. So one of the, you know, smaller, shorter ends will stay open so that we can turn everything right sides out. And then we're gonna top stitch and close that section as well. Obviously, you can also hand stitch if you don't wanna have visible top stitches. That's up to you. I'm going to top stitch. So let's sew the belt. Let's cut the seam allowance here at the corner down so we can turn everything right sides out nicely. And right here, you wanna cut towards the stitching line so that it's gonna lay nicer. You wanna do the same to the other side here. Just cut towards the stitching line so that it opens up nicely. And now I like to use a metal straw or something similar to that to turn everything right sides out. I'm gonna try to use the straw to also turn the edges and everything right sides out, but probably, especially for that sharper edge, I'll need to insert like a pointy tool to turn that right sides out. And now we can start ironing. And I'm gonna start right here, ironing it flat. And since this belt will not have a right and wrong side, I'm just gonna try to like iron it perfectly in half so that the ditch like just lays um, at the edge right there and it's not showing on either side. So for the side right here that is still open, I'm going to fold the seam allowance up like this. I'm gonna iron until the ditch of the seam right here. So you can see right here. And that should perfectly match up with the seam allowance that I already cut towards on the other side. So I'm gonna stop ironing once I reach that clip right here. And then I'll repeat the same for the other side. I will have to cut away the seam allowance here in like this triangular shape, like this. Once I iron this side, it's not gonna bulk up, so I probably have to cut away more, like so. So let's iron the, the other side. And now once I put both sides together, it should perfectly match up, like that. Now you can either hand sew or you can top stitch and I'm gonna top stitch. So the shell of the trench is finally done so we can continue with the lining. And of course, we still have to do the hem and the sleeves. So it's gonna be folded upwards like this, but we're all gonna do that once the lining will get sewn into the coat itself. So let's tackle the lining. And as I said, the lining is half a lining. So you only have, you know, the sleeve, which is nothing out of the ordinary. And then you have half of a front lining and this weird kind of looking back lining like this. It still has the sides in here, the arms eye, a full neckline, and then this thing right here with both shoulder seams so that once you actually sew this in, this is gonna lay like so. So it's gonna overlap, as I already mentioned before, like this, it's like a butterfly. And that is because you want the lining to be able to move in this area here. So similar to the movement fold in normal full linings, you have this kind of movement fold made in this way right here. So where this overlaps and this can move like so once you are wearing the coat. So that is why this is overlapping in this way. And the only thing that we have to do is put the lining together basically. And since we have the shoulders meeting here and we're gonna sew both of the, the back 
lining pieces together with the front shoulder in one go, we can't do like the uh, leaving the side seam trick when sewing the sleeves into the lining for the lining here because it's not going to work with how you're going to finish the edges of the back piece. Therefore, we can sew together the sleeve, make it into a tube. So we're going to close the sleeve dividing seam and the side seam forming a tube. And then we're going to continue working on the front and back lining and finishing the edges, which we have to do before putting the sleeves in. So let's finish the sleeves first of all. Okay, now I have both of my sleeves ready and I'm only going to close the side seam of my lining now. So this will be treated separately and I'm going to take my front piece and putting it onto the side seam of my back lining and closing the side seam right here so that we can in one go finish the hem of the lining here and not have like a weird fold or anything weird here in the side seam. And now with the edges bound, we can go ahead and pin the two back pieces on top of each other so that everything lines up nicely and fold the right side onto this in order to close the shoulder seam here like so, and now we're gonna close the shoulder seam. So now the back should look something like this. As you can see, the hemline is fully finished with bias binding and the shoulders are closed. So now we can put in the sleeves and that's just how you usually put in the sleeves. Just make sure that you grab the correct sleeve for the correct arm's eye. You can always check that with the slope of your sleeve, wherever it's steeper like here and the notch is closer to the side seam that's the front so i'm gonna put this in here and this one goes into this side and let's sew this in okay with the lining done now you can see how everything looks together i made sure to also clip into the seam allowance around the underarm area so that it lays nicely and you know opens up a bit because the seam allowance is shorter than the actual stitching line so you need to open it up by clipping into the seam allowance i also ironed all of the seam allowances towards the sleeve and now it's time to put the lining into our coat. And that works the same way as putting linings into coats generally, with the only difference that it stops at the lining notch in the front piece or like in the front facing. But let's do that together. So I have my coat right here. So I'm gonna take out all of the pins that I still have in the collar. We're gonna fix that later. So this right here is where the lining will get attached. So before pinning the lining onto my facing, I actually want to finish the front facing seam right here. So I'm just gonna go from the hem all the way up to this kind of slope right here and finish that edge by binding it with bias binding. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And I'm gonna start pinning at the center back seam or like the center back i don't have a seam in the back neck facing so i'm gonna pin both layers of the back lining onto the back neck facing and then from then on i'm just gonna match up all of the different points so the shoulder and then right here where we stopped with the bias binding i'm actually going to cut that down to the shape of the slope here. I'm going to put the lining right onto my front facing here so that the stitching lines meet and once this is sewn together this will continue on right here where the binding sits and now the in-between just has to get matched up. You will find some notches throughout the piece that you need to match up and then this shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then we'll repeat the same for the other side and sew the lining onto the coat. And 
And with the lining now in place, we have to fix the hem of the sleeve still together with the lining. So what I'm doing for that is I'm checking where the side seam of the sleeve lays and I'm kind of following it through the sleeve all the way to the hem so that I know exactly where my side seam lays and with that I reduce the risk of kind of twisting the lining inside of the shell sleeve. And I know now that this right here is my side seam and this right here is my side seam as well. So I'm gonna put a right sides of lining and shell together and I'm holding it in place with my left hand very tightly. Now I'm going in between lining and shell into the sleeve all the way out grabbing the side seams of shell and lining from my left hand into my right hand and without letting it go, turning it wrong sides out basically. So now I know these two seams get attached. I'm gonna pin it in place and I know that the other seam right here, the sleeve dividing seam goes together with this seam right here. And the in-between just has to be matched up. And then I can go ahead and sew the sleeve hem of lining and shell together. So like this, I'm gonna go around here and do the same for the other side as well. And now we can go into the sleeve from the shell side and turn this whole thing right sides out again and already go ahead and iron the hem facing up into the sleeve so it's four centimeters hem facing and that will make the lining kind of like go over top of the sleeve hem facing and that's gonna make sure that you have enough movement enough fabric to move and it's really important that you have that overlap in the hem of the sleeve, in the lining of the sleeve. So that's what we are also going to iron in here. I'm just measuring four centimeters of the sleeve hem facing up. As you can see, that's four centimeters. And then the lining starts. You can also turn this uh, sleeve with the lining side facing towards the outside, whatever you prefer. This could be easier because then you see what you're ironing. And for the sleeve hem, I'm also going to top stitch this in place, similar to what I did with the actual hem of the coat. I also top stitched at, I think, four centimeters. Now from the right side, I'm gonna top stitch the hem facing in place. So now we're gonna do a few technical things because at the moment I have the lining in place now ready and stuff, but if I go out of the coat, it could take the whole sleeve out and that's not what we want. So to prevent something like that, we actually have to use some strips like this. This is just plain cotton. You can use any scrap cotton that you have. It's just important that it can, you know, that it's, it can hold something, it's strong enough. And you are going to place this cotton strip onto the seam allowance of your shell. You're just gonna bar tack it right here. And then the other side, you're gonna bar tack onto the lining, connecting these two with a little bit of spiel right here. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing right here in the shoulder area. So right here is my shoulder point. I'm just gonna sew it right onto here through all the layers or just the seam allowance, doesn't really matter. And then attach the other end onto the shoulder seam right here of the lining. Just make sure that you have the exact spot. It needs to be this spot right here on the inside where the sleeve is attached. Not this, like not anything with the facing, with the shell fabric. It needs to be this spot here where all the linings meet. So just keep that in mind. It's this spot right here where you're going to attach the other side onto. And then here, it's the same thing as down here. And that prevents the sleeve from ever coming out once you take the coat off. So one last thing that I want to do is uh, sew the collars together. And I'm gonna try to stitch in the ditch from the right side. I'm not sure how good I can do that, um, like on the inside, 
but I'm going to try to like line up the two pieces with a pin as best as I can. Like that. And I think I'm only going to bar tack the collar in place at a few different spots. So the shoulder seam and the center back seam, because then the collar is attached, but you don't have like an ugly seam that will be showing at either the outside or the inside. Like you're never gonna get it perfect. And now I'm gonna add the bar tacks to these three points. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. The trench coat is finally done. I'm working on the buttons and buttonholes now. Obviously all of the placements you're gonna find on the pattern, I'm just copying it onto my front piece. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this series. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sunday so you can keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, go check out my socials for short format content. The most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to head over to my Etsy store. The direct link to this pattern will be in the video description down below. Make sure to actually use the link that I have in my video description down below because that means that I'm gonna get a small portion of the fees that I have to pay Etsy back if you go and follow my affiliate link down below. Nothing where you have to pay anything more or something like that. I just get a little back from Etsy. So that's a really nice thing if you could just follow the link in the description down below and buy the pattern or anything, you know, in my shop over that link. A special thank you to my channel members. You can get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below. So thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!